An organic molecule with the formula C7H8O gives the following proton NMR spectrum. And then we want to identify the molecule that best correlates with this spectrum. So the key pieces of information that we always look at in a proton NMR are first the number of signals, because that's an easy thing to count. We see that we have three signals. Um, and then we can look at the chemical shift. We can look at the integration and the splitting. So for a problem like this, this is about the order that I would consider things in. So I would notice that these all have benzene rings. Um, so let's let's think about these, these signals. So here in A, we've got a CH3, and we have these two hydrogens that would be the same as each other, these two hydrogens, and this one hydrogen. So I would expect to probably see these one, two, three different signals in the aromatic region. Um, definitely you have five aromatic hydrogens. So we should note that, five aromatic hydrogens. So that's that uh, integration piece. And we do see that there are indeed five hydrogens in the aromatic region. Um, and it's a multiplet. So this is implying to me that we've got five hydrogens on a benzene ring that aren't equivalent or else it wouldn't split. Um, but they must be chemically close enough that their signals are overlapping. And this is common to see this kind of messiness in that aromatic region. Um, so, but one thing this does tell us, five hydrogens, is that eliminates B, because B has these two aromatic hydrogens and these two. So I would see two distinct signals in the aromatic region with B, and moreover, I would see a total, so a sum total from those two signals of four hydrogens. So four aromatic hydrogens. Hydrogens, so definitely not looking at B. Um, so when you see five hydrogens in the in the benzene ring region, you know unsubstituted benzene has six hydrogens. Six minus five is one. So this tells me that it is a mono substituted benzene. Right. So maybe we should have finished that thought earlier because that would have definitely eliminated B. But A, C, and D are all mono substituted benzenes. Um, so there's a few things that could could cause us to eliminate some of these answers. Um, this aldehyde signal we should be able to pick out really easily at 9 to 10 ppm. And there's nothing. There's definitely no aldehyde because that's where it would be. Um, and yeah, this would only have the aldehyde and signals here. So it wouldn't explain at all what's going on with these signals. So we can get rid of those. And then between A and, and D, just the integration alone can tell you, because here you've got two hydrogens and one hydrogen that are different. Here, this would be a three hydrogen singlet. And we're just not seeing that. Um, so our answer must be B. Let's just make sure we can interpret all the pieces and assign these signals to this structure. Um, so the five hydrogen multiplet, that's all of these aromatic ring hydrogens. And so, they're not equivalent, but you don't have anything strongly electron withdrawing or electron donating directly attached to the ring. Of course, you've got this oxygen out here, but it's separated from the ring by that CH2 group. Um, so close enough that the signals overlap is what we're seeing here. And this isn't unusual for an aromatic ring to see this five hydrogen multiplet. Sometimes these two and these three will be distinct and you'll see a two hydrogen multiplet and a three hydrogen multiplet, but here they're just close enough that they must be falling in the same region. So perhaps a really high field, a really strong magnet where you really zoomed in on that, you might be able to differentiate those hydrogens. Okay, and now finally two hydrogens must be these two hydrogens. And there, it's a singlet, which might make you question, why is it not being split by this adjacent, the proton on the adjacent oxygen? Well, protons, 
So let's make a note of this. Protons on oxygen or nitrogen. You often see them not causing splitting. So they're often broad. Um, so let's finish that. Protons on oxygen or nitrogen can hydrogen bond. And so what that does is it causes a broad signal. And we can see that this is a little bit broad. And it often doesn't split or cause splitting. So that's one reason why both of these are appearing as singlets, even though technically there is neighboring hydrogens. If you were able to prepare this alcohol sample and get it really, really dry, so you didn't have that proton exchange, you might see some splitting here. Um, so let's, let's just label these. We've got A, so that's the benzene ring. B, these two hydrogens are these two hydrogens. And C, this signal right here is C. And one final thing to note about this alcohol, another way that we could test for this is to see if it exchanges with D2O. So what does that mean? That means you can add a drop of deuterium to the sample and if the and the peak would disappear if it is a proton on oxygen or nitrogen. Um, so that it would exchange with the deuterated uh, water. So then instead of being OH, it would be OD, and deuterium is invisible. So that's why that peak would disappear. So that's another test that you can do.